just finished an awesome interview with Slew. It was a really cool live stream that actually just finished about 10 minutes ago. Um, it was all about the lunar eclipse that's going on, uh, what's going on during the day. That was really cool. It was out in the Southern Hemisphere. So we were doing uh, a live stream from the telescopes out in South Africa and in Australia. It was super cool. And a lot of times lunar eclipses tend to happen right around the time of a solar eclipse. And that's just because the moon is now being crossed in, in uh, within Earth's uh, range between Earth and the Sun. So it's getting closer and closer and closer to the alignment of uh, the Sun, the Moon, and then Earth. Let's say I'm Earth. So it's just getting closer and closer to those shadows, and so there's lots of shadows being cast on each other. But I wanted to talk to you guys about um, the different types of solar filters that are out there that people are using for their binoculars or their telescopes, and just like these glasses that I spoke about the other day. Um, so these just kind of have like a mylar coating on them, which is why they're very reflective. Um, I got these at NASA. You guys can get yours at like um, AAS.org, which is um, the um, Astronomical Association. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, the American Astronomical Association, and or you get that on NASA. But I want to talk to you guys about. Um, the, so that type of filter is called a white light filter, also known as a polymer filter. Um, so it has like the mylar coating on it. It's able to actually filter out um, the unwanted like wavelengths that come from the sun which will then lead to a hydrogen alpha filter that I really want to talk to you guys about. So the first time I actually looked at the sun during the daytime through a telescope was with an H alpha filter, also known as hydrogen alpha filter. And I remember this, it was in my college, it was in the observatory, and I was like, kind of nervous at first. I was like, wait a second, I don't know if I can really like trust this telescope right now, can I, can I do this? And then I was like, you know what? Like, I'm, you know, in college, I'm going to trust this professor. I did it. And it was amazing because you're able to see, like, sunspots on, on the sun. It's, like, the coolest thing ever. The sunspots are, like, the more cooler regions or uh, black. And it's, like, really, really cool. And from those is, like, where then, like, coronal mass ejections really erupt and, like, prominences. And it's really cool. And that's, that's a different story. But um, the reason it's called a hydrogen alpha filter is because um, the light that's being emitted from the sun is in something known as... Um, the hydrogen alpha uh, wavelength. And this is a very like narrow bandwidth. And uh, what that just means is the, the wavelength in which it's being transmitted to us um, is it's well, on the spectral line, it's right in like the hydrogen area. Also because um, now the, the sun is made of 70% hydrogen. So all of its electrons are in a, like a very excited state. It's, um, and so with the hydrogen alpha filter, what that does is it um, absorbs the unwanted wavelength um, from the sun that will actually so filters it out and absorbs it so that we can safely be looking at the sun. Um, and so what's really cool about it is the electrons are being knocked down from the, the third energy state to the second lowest energy state. So when it's being knocked down to lower energy states, then uh, it's changing the wavelength in which it's being transmitted to us. And that's just because, you know, electrons are crazy, they're all over the place. And then they can literally be like knocked down so that they're a little bit less crazy, less all over the place. And then it's being transmitted much like at a lower wavelength, which is a lot safer for um, our visibility for us to actually look at it. So I kind of just wanted to share that with you guys because I find this to be extremely important because if you guys are going to be looking at the sun, especially if you're like, in a region where I am, where you're not in the path of totality. Um, and what that just means is the sun is not going to be, it doesn't cover the entire like world at the same time. Um, when the moon, because the moon is a lot smaller than earth, its shadows, so it covering sun, um, is not going to actually be able to cover the entire country. It's only covering certain areas because the moon is traveling like this, and so it's gonna be it's gonna be going from like about um, like Oregon to uh, to South Carolina's the path of totality. So that's the area in which it's gonna be casting a shadow, um, or it's gonna be blocking the sun. And all the other areas is going to be known as like partial uh, solar eclipses. So like New York, you're still going to have a bit of the sun that's exposed there. So you definitely can't take off your glasses. I don't care if you got like really awesome like your, your Ray-Bans or your Gucci sunglasses. You, unfortunately, those do not protect your eyes. So this one is like really important to have. So I got these, like I said the other day, from NASA. So you can totally go NASA website or you can go to AAS.org. You can totally get your glasses. It's, they're really dark. Like you can't, I can't see anything right now. <laughs> But anyway, what are you guys doing for the solar eclipse? Make sure to have your safety glasses because I don't want any guys getting sunburned or going blind. Um, but yeah, so I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.